Service providers are experiencing a rapid change in how their customers consume services, resulting in increased operational complexity, which is ultimately driving digital transformation. So how will the emergence of 5G and edge computing solutions help them through this transformation journey? Well, joining me now is Rick Hamilton, Senior Vice President at Blue Planet Software. Rick, very nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, nice to see you. Thanks for having me. Now, for a long time now, we've been hearing that 2020 would be the year that we'd see 5G networks begin to be deployed at scale. Um, where do you see 5G in terms of its deployment and maturity? Yeah, I think 2020 is kind of the year, right? We see uh, these networks actually being deployed around the world. From our view, there's 50 to 60 commercial applications or deployments uh, globally, and uh, that's exciting. I, I do think, however, it's going to continue to be a journey uh, for everybody. I, I think on multiple levels, sort of the operator's ability to continue to deploy and scale these networks, uh, and most importantly, the creation of uh, the use cases or the applications that um, that 5G will drive. And what we see is this, you know, we've talked about it for a while now, but this classic story of does the technology provide the ability for the use cases to be delivered, or do the use cases provide the drive and the economics for the technology to be deployed? We certainly think the technology has to be out there, uh, and people will start to find unique and interesting ways to take advantage of that technology. And we see that happening around the world. And I think for all of us now, that, that's a pretty, pretty exciting change. And what are the main challenges that service providers are facing? And also, you know, are you hearing any uh, surprises from your customers? Yeah, I think the challenges are, maybe I would say three things. You know, the first is um, the, the struggle with what I would describe as proprietary radio networks, proprietary technology. These closed systems are becoming a challenge for service providers around the world for, for a number of reasons. So we see, we see a lot of activity in trying to address the, open, the openness of the mobile network itself. So that, that's certainly one. Uh, the second is you know, the, 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 the paradigm under which services will be deployed across 5G networks are uh, rapid and dynamic, and that isn't the status quo in most operators. Uh, so, how do you deliver these service in a very services in a very flexible, rapid manner, and manage the complexity that's wrapped around uh, the ability to do that? And the third, of course, is what I said earlier, which is I'll just broadly call it the economics. So, you have to have the right use cases so that you can properly monetize the technology that's being put in the market, and those use cases are starting to emerge. But but again, that that's a bit of a journey. So I think probably the three areas that are maybe not surprising for people, but definitely something everybody is having to address around the world. Can you go into some more detail about the role of network slicing in 5G? Yeah, network slicing is kind of a, a new paradigm in how we think about the organization and the utilization of network assets, routes, and, and the assets within those routes. Essentially, as these use cases, we call them, are being developed, those use cases have an uh, interesting set of characteristics. Uh, some might be latency tolerant or not latency tolerant. Some might require a great deal of speed and bandwidth. Some might require both. Uh, network slicing allows the operators to develop sort of virtual network connections end-to-end -end from the service to where that service needs to be connected to. Uh, and so slicing is going to become sort of this next evolution of the, the network sort of evolving around the services that are being deployed against it. And is it important that, um, you know, the speed at which the slices uh, get delivered um, and also how they're managed? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think these these use cases are going to be uh, rapidly sort of evolving, meaning they're going to be very dynamic. Uh, and in fact, if you think way out to the edge, consumers will probably be defining the way in which they use particular applications in the 5G world. So you have to be able to rapidly create a network slice that's conducive to that application and change it very quickly. Uh, sometimes it might be throughout the day. Sometimes it might be uh, sort of on a frequent weekly, monthly uh, basis, but the speed and flexibility at which you can bring these slices to bear and make them available and then reprovision them for a different use at a different time is is going to be incredibly important 
in the 5G paradigm. Now, the promise of 5G, network slicing, intelligent automation, you know, this is all well and good, but service providers do face a lot of technical challenges and hurdles to fulfill this promise. How is Blue Planet helping them? Well, I think in two ways. You know, one is traditionally the world of if you think about sort of systems, OSS and, and BSS systems, the way we interact with customers and the way that we manage our internal systems and how that translates into network services, they have traditionally been very siloed organizations and even architecturally fairly siloed. So from a Blue Planet perspective, as an example, uh, we're trying to create technology that brings those three worlds together. You know, if you think about the dynamics and the implications and the complexity of network slicing and 5G, uh, you can't operate in silos. You can't be handing up data. You have to act sort of uh, very consistently from end to end. And we've developed our portfolio of technology to allow the operators to do that. So from a customer interaction to quickly and rapidly designing the slices and implementing them into the network and then managing them and operating them and making adjustments as required, you know, based on the performance, those all have to act pretty uh, contiguously. They have to be together. And we think our role in this uh, space really has been to provide a platform uh, for, for operators to do just that, to operate sort of in the context of that service in a single environment that helps drive automation and deal with the complexity that exists in the end-to-end -end delivery of these services. Rick, thanks very much for sharing your insights and joining us today. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having us on the show. I appreciate it.